In 2022, researchers at the University of Brazil did an interesting experiment. They had people do calf raises on a leg press machine, except with one very important difference. One group did their regular, you know, standard calf raise or calf press, while the other two groups did a half range of motion, specifically the bottom portion or the top portion, the top half of the calf raise. Now, if you're anything like me and you subscribe to kind of like more old school, traditional bodybuilding thought processes, processes, process half reps, half muscle, right? Surprisingly not. In this group, they actually saw that those doing the bottom half of the exercise, they actually saw more than double the muscle growth of the other groups, including the guys actually doing the full range of motion. Now, as weird as this may sound, this actually does start to make a little bit more sense because this takes advantage of a sort of new-ish style of training, a sort of new training concept, which has been making the rounds on YouTube called stretch mediated hypertrophy. Stretch mediated hypertrophy. Stretch mediated hypertrophy. Stretch, 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 stretch. Now, right off the bat, listen, trust me, I know this topic can get fairly complicated, but after spending the last like a week or two researching it, I am now going to simplify the shit out of it for you. Because let's be honest, you guys probably don't want to watch a two hour lecture video on muscle fascicle length extension via hyper bilateral sarcoid neurogenesis. What the hell is even that? So in the simplest terms, you can sort of think of the muscles on your body kind of like rubber bands stretched across your joints. For example, when it comes to your biceps, it's like a rubber band stretched across the elbow joint. Now, when you lower the weights or cable or machine or whatever, that rubber band is stretching, but then on the second portion of the lift, it is going to shorten and contract to lift the weight back up. Now here's where the cool part sort of kicks in. There is growing evidence that you can actually trigger additional muscle hypertrophy, more muscle growth, if you emphasize this portion of the exercise when the muscle is at its most stretched position while simultaneously holding on or resisting a load, whether that be a dumbbell, a cable, a machine, whatever. Now specifically, there are four studies which I wanna illustrate today. The first two were targeting the triceps. Essentially, people were asked to perform two different exercises, one per arm. The first one was a regular single arm cable tricep extension, and the second one was very similar. Again, single arm cable tricep extension, except it was done in the overhead position. See, the kind of cool thing about the triceps is that there are three heads to the muscle, hence the name triceps. And one of these heads, specifically called the long head, attaches not on your upper arm, but actually on your scapula. This means that when you raise your arm over your head, it actually puts that long head of the tricep into a slightly stretched position. You can do this at home. You can do this right now. Lift your arm and you can actually feel your tricep. Like there's a significantly more of a stretch right now as opposed to this and as opposed to that. Both of these studies actually saw significantly more growth in the arms doing overhead tricep extensions as opposed to the alternative. Now, when it comes to the other studies I mentioned, they essentially did something similar except with other muscle groups. For example, in the hamstring study, they tested lying versus seated leg curls. Now, don't get me wrong, both are excellent exercises which do very sufficiently target the hamstrings, except based on the anatomy of your hamstring muscles, when you're doing this exercise in a seated position, this actually like already prematurely or preemptively or I have no idea. My wife always makes fun of me for being ESL and here I am giving her more ammunition. I, I can't wait until she watches this. Whatever, seated version equals slightly more stretch, you get the picture. This is because your hamstrings insert on your pelvis, they pretty much attach to like the back of your ass. So when you sit up as opposed to uh, lying down, this already preemptively puts your hamstrings into a little bit of a stretched position. You can even push this forward by essentially leaning forward even more so when doing the seated hamstring leg curl. And once again, similar to the tricep study, the group doing the preemptively stretched version of the exercise, the seated version, they did see a bit more muscle growth. Now, don't get me wrong, both exercises still worked. Both exercises did put muscle on the test subjects. It's just that one of them did a little bit more. But what I find really interesting is that even like all science aside, if we just go back in time to like the golden age of bodybuilding, I feel like those guys already intuitively 
They kind of knew this. I vividly remember guys like Frank Zane, Lee Haney, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all of these guys really talking about the importance of going like all the way down, getting that full range of motion and really getting that deep stretch on like dumbbell flies, bench press, squats, you name it. Okay, we get it. It seems like working out with a bit more stretch on the target muscle is a nice little fitness hack to, I guess, build more or build faster muscle. But does that mean that we have to change everything? Do we have to radically, like, rethink everything we know about bodybuilding and just throw this out the window? No. This is because unless you are training like a complete jackass with terrible exercise form and even more terrible exercise selection, you are probably already taking into account, taking advantage of this more stretched focused training. But that being said, if you really want to be on the safe side and you want to really maximize your gains, here are three simple practical tips that you could incorporate into your training like today if you want to take advantage of all of this scientific mumbo jumbo. Number one, this is truly the final nail in the coffin for anybody who trains with anything other than full range of motion. All the guys out there, they go in the gym, they load up like 500 pounds on the squat. They proceed to squat down like a quarter of what they should realistically be doing. They don't realize that because of their massive ego, they are inadvertently cutting out the main portion of that exercise of the squat, which actually puts the quadriceps under the most amount of stretch and thus is the most productive part of that exercise. Same case for like the bench press, for example. And this actually is a point of a little bit of personal pain and personal embarrassment because I used to be this guy. I vividly remember when I was like 15 and I was working out in my high school gym, I used to do this bullshit where I would only go like halfway down pretty much and I used to say, oh well, you don't need to go any deeper. You don't need to touch your chest as long as your elbows hit, you know, perpendicular 90 degree angle and blah blah blah. <laughs> Fortunately, by the time I hit grade 12, I got my head out of my ass, dropped the weight by like 20, 30 pounds, and actually started doing full range of motion. Bar to the chest every time. Number two, there are certain variations of some exercises which might be superior at putting that muscle into a more preemptively stretched position. This is especially true with uh, certain muscles which cross over two joints as opposed to one, which is a bit more common. We call these biarticular muscles. Now how you take advantage of this is, like I've already mentioned earlier, for the hamstrings you want to do them uh, seated leg curls as opposed to the lying down version. For triceps you want to do some overhead work and then biceps are another good example of this. And one of the ways that you can take advantage here would be to do essentially curls where your arm is slightly behind the body. This would be great, uh, examples of this would be face away cable curls or incline dumbbell curls where you actually sit on a bench with a slight inclination or a very high inclination actually and you do curls except your arm is literally behind your torso putting the biceps and you can literally feel it when you sit down and you put your arms back into a slightly more stretched position. But also one thing I really do want to get across to you guys is that I am not saying that these exercises, that's it. They should now be your bread and butter and you should throw away everything else out the window. I am just saying that if you're not doing any of the exercises I mentioned, like if you go in the gym and your standard typical training, uh, tricep training week is just like standing, you know, regular cable tricep extensions, two arm cable tricep extensions, rope cable tricep extensions, everything done kind of like right here, that's fine, don't get me wrong, but it also probably wouldn't be a bad idea for you to substitute one of those exercises with an overhead alternative, whether it be one arm or two arm, or you can do it with a dumbbell, there's, there's multiple ways of doing it. Number three, for most exercises, it's probably a good idea for you to drop the weight a little bit, maybe slow down a little bit, and really emphasize that stretched portion of the lift which unfortunately is the exact opposite of what I see so many people in the gym doing. I will see so many people every week get onto the standing calf raise, bounce up and down as fast as possible, doing like 30 reps, getting a grand total of like 12 milliseconds of emphasis in that you know time under tension, in that stretched uh, position, and then proceed to complain about how the calves are really hard to grow and it's genetic and blah blah blah. blah. Why did Lisa dump me? Is it because of my small calves? 
They're the hardest place to add mass. Okay, first of all, you're, you're not wrong. It's actually a really hard to grow the calves. My genetics aren't that good. No. <laughs> but even then, you training them like crap, it's not exactly helping the situation. These people would be much better suited, in my opinion at least, to drop the weight like 20%, slow down the movement, and actually spend a little bit more time going through the full range of motion, particularly in that bottom fully stretched position. Okay, I know I said three tips, but I screw it, I have a fourth bonus one. Do you remember w way long ago, six minutes into the past, when I talked about that study at the beginning with the people doing calf raises and they're doing partial range of motion? That is actually a sort of new-ish style of training on its own. We call this long length partials. Essentially, the belief was that if that portion of the exercise, the stretched portion, is the most like hypertrophy inducing, what if you just like did only that and essentially ignored everything else? Examples of this would be like in the lat pull down, this would be sort of like the first half of the exercise. Uh, on the bench press, this would be the sort of bottom portion of the exercise, essentially when your elbows are at or below 90 degrees. And then for things like the bicep curl, this would pretty much be pretty much before your elbows make a 90 degree angle. It's sort of like just this sort of first half of the motion. And there's actually a considerable amount of research that has come out showing that this is an effective technique, potentially even more effective than traditional full range of motion training. But that being said, before I really jump on the bandwagon and call this like the new holy grail of training, I wanna wait for a little bit more research before I really recommend this to you guys. One of the reasons, pretty much the main reason behind this is because although all of this new evidence is pretty cool to look at, pretty much all of it has been done exclusively with fully untrained individuals, those with almost no or completely zero training experience, which has led some critics to say that this sort of like long length partial training is only a newbie phenomena, essentially speculating that maybe after your first six to 12 months of lifting, it no longer really gives you any additional benefits. However, luckily there actually is a study testing this theory right now. When it's done, this study will be the first of its kind to specifically test long length partial training in trained subjects as opposed to newbies who've pretty much never picked up a dumbbell. It's being run by these guys, one of which their name uh, you will probably recognize because I have talked about and used him as a source on this channel like 400 times over the last eight years or something. And it's actually also being funded by uh, Jeff Nippert. And that's pretty cool. So again, props to these guys. To summarize, number one, you working out with a bit more emphasis on the stretch, probably a good idea. Does it necessitate massive changes to your training? Probably not. Unless you train like absolute crap, in which case, yeah, for you it might be a bit of a change. Number three, full range of motion is awesome, especially when done with a nice deep stretch. This shit is better than you losing your virginity on prom night in a threesome to you, Sydney Sweeney, and a clone of Sydney Sweeney. It is the shit. Number four, there are certain exercises which already preemptively put yourself into a bit more stretch, and it's probably a good idea to work them into your training at least every now and then. And finally, long length partials are an interesting up and coming style of training and one that ideally you want to look at for a bit more research, specifically with trained subjects. And when that research is published, you can bet your boy will do a video on them. I'll probably do it like a month late, but I will do a video on them, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you for watching the video, especially if you made it this far. One thing I do want to mention before I kind of sign off, two things actually. So number one, my protein has kind of boosted my code temporarily. Usually it's 40% off, but right now if you use code Vitruvian, it's actually 50% off for a limited time. And also what you can use that extended code on is right now my protein has like a limited time uh, collaboration with Marvel. They actually have three new flavors of their Clearway Isolate. Again, as I've talked about, my favorite protein supplement pretty much ever made. They've got like a Spider-Man one, Captain Marvel, and Black Panther. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you liked the video. If you did, leave me a like. And if you didn't, I don't know, tell me to go fuck myself down in the comment section below. Apparently it's all good for the YouTube algorithm, so don't worry. I love all of you guys equally.